Hi students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody is having a fantastic start to their weekend so far. Hi Ali, hi Shaksnoza, hi Lee, hi Nisa. Good to see many students in the class already. Uh, in this class, we are looking at an IELTS speaking part two cue card, and we're going to be practicing for those band nine results. While we wait for a few more of your fellow classmates, this lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. That's generalisleshelp.com. On both of those websites, we have lots and lots of help for the speaking as well as the listening, reading, and writing sections of the exam with full practice exams, interactive courses, applications for your mobile, uh, as well as over 100 hours of HD lesson videos. This is our academic IELTS website here with the blue background. You can click this big red button to join our premium package. We are an IELTS test registration center and certified agents, so you're in good hands with us. Once you log in, you'll have a My Student account. You can log into your My Student account. And once you're in your My Student account, uh, one of the options that you have is the uh, student partner uh, speaking. And once you enter the student partner speaking, you can video or audio chat uh, with other students by keeping this page open here. Okay, uh, General IELTS website, same idea, green background. Click this big red button uh, to join our premium packages there. Hi, Atharwa. Hi, Janil. Hi, Rashika. Good to see uh, many of our members joining in as well. All right. Nice. Okay, so um, students, uh, tomorrow at the same time, we will be releasing our HD video, My IELTS Band 9 Journey, Episode 4. Uh, that's going to be my test results. I sat the official IELTS exam a few months back, and we filmed that, so check that out tomorrow. It's premiering tomorrow. And uh, you can follow us on Instagram. You can download our apps, Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help, link them to the websites, and you can send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com if you have some questions. Okay, uh, so after this class, we'll have a couple days break, and then I'm back on Wednesday uh, with um, a speaking part one that will be uh, for everyone. Now let's take a look at today's speaking part two question. So uh, this is speaking part two. Make sure to speak and repeat. Okay, so in your IELTS um, speaking interview, the interview will be about 12 minutes long, roughly, usually. And uh, you have three parts. Part one, the examiner will ask some questions about you and about a general topic that's connected to you, like your hobbies, whether or not you like to cook, um, sports that you like to play, uh, music you like to listen to. So that's part one. And that will take about five minutes. And then the examiner uh, will continue by saying, okay, that's the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. For part two, I will show you some questions. You will have one minute to read the questions. Think about your answers. There's some note paper in front of you. You have your pen. Uh, you can take notes in the one minute if you wish. And then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, uh, when to stop. Describe a person you learned about in school, your one minute preparation time begins now. 
and then your one minute begins, and it's arguably the most important one minute in your 12-minute speaking interview, which is kind of ironic because you're not actually speaking, but it's the most important one minute in your speaking um, because the ideas that you come up with, the answer that you come up with will have a huge impact on your part two speaking uh, results, and it will also hugely impact your part three because part three of the speaking is connected to your part two. And this is where band seven, eight, nine, band six students are separated from each other. Okay. So the one minute preparation time is super, super important. Okay. All right. So IELTS speaking part two, describe a person you learned about in school. Step number one is to read the topic statement twice, okay, two times, just to make sure that you're clear. So it's a person you learned about in school, okay? You should say who the person is, what class you learned about this person, and why this person is memorable from your studies, Okay, so here, notice that there's kind of just three questions uh, following that topic uh, statement. So we have one, two, three, four elements here. Sometimes you have four. Sometimes you have as many as six, seven elements, okay? But you have to be able to speak for the two minutes. All right. So um, now... Step one, as I just said, is uh, read the topic statement and the questions two times. So you are absolutely clear on what you need to say. If you go off topic, if you talk about a person that you like, if you talk about a person that you met, if you're not talking about a person specifically that you talked about in school, if you're talking about many people that you learned about in school, your score will go down. Your band score will go down. Your speaking part three band score will go down because you will have difficulty making connections and understanding the questions, okay? You be good job in the speaking, congratulations. All right, um, you're very welcome, UV. Send me a testimonial, email me, okay? All right, so step one, read the topic statement so that you are 110% sure that you know what you have to talk about. Step two, identify the category, person, place, object, event, idea, that you are talking about, okay? So in the IELTS uh, speaking part two, you're going to be basically talking about a person, a place, an object, an event, an idea, um, and you will be discussing that in detail. And each of these has some specific points that you have to say to have good, clear communication, okay? so. What are we talking about with this question? A person, place, an object, an event, or an idea? Uh, technical Munshi, if you stop before the examiner stops you, there's a good chance that you're losing marks because you should be able to talk uh, for the whole two minutes or until the examiner stops you, okay? Now, that doesn't mean ramble and talk about anything. You have to stay on topic, okay? And you have to complete the answers, but then you can elaborate. You can give more details until the examiner stops you, okay? So, <clears throat> Jasur says, here we're talking about a person. Absolutely. So, category is firstly a person plus in this case so sometimes you have this kind of like double category okay so uh, you're talking about a person and what so describe a person you learned about in school you should say who the person is what class you learned about this person why this person is memorable from your studies. Uh, Kyber, very good. It's also an event, right? It's the event of learning about this person. 
Very nice. And if you recognize that here, you're talking about both a person and an event, then you are on an excellent path to giving a really good response and being easily able to talk for the whole two minutes. Does everybody now see that in this part two question, you're talking about a person because it's a person you learned about in school, but you're also talking about an event. The event is learning about this person. Does everybody see that? Okay, Rashika seems to see that because Rashika says, yeah, there's an event that's happening here as well. Now, when we talk about a person, okay, and we want to talk clearly about a person, then what should we do? And I know that some students have the answer for this. So what should we do when we want to talk about a person clearly to our audience? Okay, if I'm talking to you about Napoleon, about uh, Queen Elizabeth, Caesar, then what information should I include? So Kyber says appearance. We should describe what this person looks like. Okay, sure. So we want to talk about their appearance. Atharwa says we should talk about their personality. Okay, and um, when you talk about the personality, um, how, to, how do we um, emphasize personality? So if I'm talking about, uh, for instance, Cleopatra, how can I emphasize her personality? So if I say Cleopatra was an extremely intelligent um, leader or noble in Egyptian history, um, how can I emphasize that? I can, yeah, so Kyber says backed by action. So not back, but back by action, absolutely. So if I say Cleopatra was very intelligent because she was able to form a strong alliance with the Roman Empire in order to protect the interests of Egypt, then I can show that Cleopatra truly was intelligent. She was also a very beautiful and charismatic individual because she was able to uh, win the uh, heart of uh, Marcus, the Caesar or the Roman emperor of the time, right? So um, its person is uh, described by appearance, personality, backed by action, okay? And the reason I say that, students, is because so often when the part two cue card topic is about a person, what happens is the candidate starts talking about the person. Like, let's say they have to talk about, um, oh, let's say, Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan, the Mongolian uh, leader of the Golden Horde, right? The emperor of, um, or it's not the emperor, they had a different, the Khan, they called him the Khan, the Khan of the Mongol uh, people. And they'll say, okay, he was ruthless, he was clever, uh, he was ambitious, um, he was hardworking, and, they'll, and the candidate will start listing the personality of Genghis Khan, but no action. So they're not talking about how Genghis Khan was a war strategist, came up with clever ideas uh, to defeat his enemies. So uh, they will just keep saying personality, 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 and it doesn't make sense. Okay. So if you just say the personality um, one after the other, they're kind, they're helpful, they're hardworking. It's kind of like, oh, okay, 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 whoa, 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 okay, can you just tell me how that happened? Like, what happened? I don't know this person. Um, so that's a very common mistake, very common mistake uh, when talking about people. You have to practice slowing down. When you say a personality, like kind or hardworking, you have to back it up by action. He was hardworking. He woke up at 5 a.m. every morning, met with his war leaders, for three hours, discussed strategy, and then kept training his soldiers and working until midnight. Okay, that's hard working, all right? 
So that's how you do it. Everybody clear on that. So if you're going to say a personality or a characteristic of a person, back it up by their actions. That will create fluency, coherence, good communication, high band score. Okay. Everybody got it? All right. So that's how that works. Very common mistake to just jump around in the personality. Now, um, the subcategory is an event here. And when we talk about an event, Jesuit says, okay, gotcha. All right. Um, when you talk about an event, good, good. So Precious uh, Muchemwa says yes. AG says yes, sir. Good, good. All right. So um, when you talk about an event, what do you have to include? So to make communication clear for a listener and you're discussing an event, um, what should you include? Okay, what should you add into the event? So the time, right? The location, okay? The attendees, who was at the event? And the activities, okay? Um, so what happened in your experience? All right, so if I'm talking about an event, like something that I learned in school, and I talk about when that happened, where it happened exactly, who was there, what kind of activity did we do, and um, the experience that we had, uh, then um, we're going to have clear communication, okay? So notice now here, for a person, it's appearance, personality, um, and then uh, back by their actions, and then we have time, location, attendees, activities, experience. If I remember all of this, because I studied for the IELTS before I sit the IELTS, and I get this part two cue card question, describe a person you learned about in school, who the person is, what class you learned about this person, why this person is memorable uh, f uh, from your studies, you will easily have two minutes of clear, non-repetitive, structured communication because that's your goal, okay? So, by recognizing the above, you will now easily produce 120 seconds of clear, structured and non-repetitive communication or answer. Okay, guarantee it, all right? If you just say one or two sentences for each of these, you're golden, okay? You're getting a band nine, all right? As long as it's good grammar, okay? So um, let's now then, we've recognized all this, choose a few people. So let's Choose three possible answers. Okay. So give me some uh, give me some suggestions here. So somebody that we learned about in school. Um, what would be some responses to this that would be easy for uh, the examiner to understand? Now here, try to pick someone that you think just about every person on earth might know uh, some information about. Okay. Uh, Chabi says, Mahatma Gandhi, sure. Yeah. Uh, Nelson Mandela. Yeah, we all seem to learn about Adolf Hitler. Sure. I don't know if you learn about Michael Jackson in uh, school. Fidel Castro? Yeah, sure. Okay. Einstein? Yeah. Sure. Winston Churchill? Very good. Yep. Shakespeare? Sure. Stephen Hawkins? Quite possibly. Mother Teresa? Possibly. Okay. Uh, let's go with Fidel Castro today. Why not? Okay, I think he's a great pick. Absolutely. Brilliant person, brilliant life. 
uh, one of the arguably one of the most um, famous kind of leaders uh, of uh, the 20th century for sure. So uh, I like that one, Fidel Castro. Why not? Very characteristic, very good character. Okay, sure. All right. So uh, Fidel Castro, now we need to take some notes. Okay, and when you're taking your notes here, I would probably talk about the event first. Okay, so um, when would you learn from Fidel Castro? When do you think? So what would be the time in your school years where you would learn about Fidel Castro? Okay, and I'm sure most of you have heard about Fidel Castro. Jai Neal, how can you not know Fidel Castro? Everybody talks about him. Maybe you do, Jai Neal. Once we get going on it, maybe you'll be like, oh, yeah, 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 it's that guy. Okay. So be brave. Well, if you don't know about Fidel Castro, it's time you learn a little bit about him. Okay. Um, so Shalpika says political science class. Jasura says probably world history class in secondary school. Yeah, absolutely. Let's be more specific. So grade... 11 history class. Okay, um, sure. You can, might even say something like five years ago. Okay. Um, let's uh, say... Um, Fifty third uh, school Jeddah. Okay, so we're gonna go with Saudi Arabia today. So um, you want to be specific. Okay, so where did you learn about him? Eleventh um, uh, grade history class uh, five years ago. Fifty second school, not fifty sec third. Fifty second school uh, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Sure. People probably learn about them all over the world. So why not? Okay. And you learned about them in history class. Uh, who was your teacher? Okay. So think about the attendees. All right. So again, all I'm doing right now is I'm thinking about some notes um, for the event, for the time, the location, uh, the attendees, the activities, and the experience. So who were the attendees? Okay, who was there? Your 22 classmates? Your 20 classmates? Maybe you did a group project. And maybe your teacher, Mr. Ahmed. Okay. So those were the attendees. And you're going to see how we can really put those into some nice sentences. Notice how this time I'm doing this very quickly to show you that if you know this information, you can get good notes down very quickly, even in less than one minute. Okay. All right. Um, VG says, Mr. Mark, the teacher, 20 classmates. Yeah, exactly. Evan Alam says, teacher Adrian. Sure. Why not? It could be an English history class, although Fidel Castro is not an English character, but why not? Okay. Uh, you did a group project. You're visualizing this presentation, uh, PowerPoint presentation for the class. Okay. Excellent. Now, so that's the event. And now we talk about the person. Of course, you're not really um, writing down person in your notes. This is just for this class, for your studies. So uh, what does Fidel Castro look like? So the appearance, and I think this is why Fidel is a good choice, because the appearance of Fidel Castro. Okay, and I think when we think of Fidel Castro, everybody kind of has that picture of Fidel Castro. Anybody who knows Fidel Castro would have a very uh, clear uh, picture and his right hand man Che Guevara that we see on t-shirts and things all the time as well. Okay, so military man. He was obviously often in a military uniform. He was slim and fit. I'd say average height. Okay, um, there are a couple of really uh, characteristic features 
of Fidel Castro. Um, anybody who doesn't know about Fidel Castro, if you open up another window and you just Google him, you're going to see a lot of information. Okay. All right. Uh, Liam says tall. Yeah, just sure says with a beard and a pointed nose. Yeah, Fidel Castro had that very characteristic big beard and mustache maybe his entire life and kind of that sharp nose. Yeah, so beard and mustache, big beard. And mustache. Pointed nose. Okay. Um, and he always had his uh, cap on, right? He always wore a cap. With the red star, the communist star, right? Um, he always had that as well. <laughs> Dang Lee says he's kind of handsome. All right, maybe I, I didn't never saw him that way, but uh, possibly. I don't think he wore a big smile, Akshay. Uh, Fidel Castro didn't seem to smile very much from what I saw, but maybe I didn't see those uh, pictures. There was another characteristic part, and if anybody's Googling, Googling him right now, you'll probably notice that there was always something in his mouth. I don't know if anybody stated that, but he was very famous for this. He always had something hanging from his mouth. What did he have hanging from his mouth and a lot of his... There we go, Sandeep ready. Sandeep's like, he always had a cigar hanging from his mouth. Yeah, he was a bold character, Evan. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, cigar in his mouth. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so what was his character? Um, what was Fidel Castro's character? He, he had some very strong characteristic uh, traits. Now, when you give me his character, students, going back to my previous point, I always want character and action. So give me his character and then give me the action that supports that characteristic of his, right? right? So, um, Okay, so for example, uh, here I'm writing a bit much, but it's just to kind of uh, show to you uh, what I mean. So he's an assertive leader. Um, he had basically control of Cuba for his entire life. So he was the leader of Cuba for his entire life for the second half of the 20th century. Okay, um, Evan says he was bold and courageous. Okay, Evan Alam, I agree with you. He was definitely bold, definitely courageous. Um, how do we support that? So what did he do to um, absolutely one of the most courageous people in history, no doubt? Um, what kind of actions uh, can we can we uh, say to back up the fact that he was courageous? Okay? So how can we, yeah, okay, so Lee M says he was a revolutionary. So he led a revolutionary war in Cuba to take control of the government. Absolutely. He did something else, okay, that really strongly um, shows that uh, he was very, very courageous. Okay. Anissa says he was egocentric, liked attention. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, let's go back to courageous. There's, there's something that Fidel Castro did for many, many years, which definitely makes him an extremely courageous person. I mean, I respect him for this um, a lot. He was a freedom fighter. Yeah. So he was a just person, right? He wanted justice, um, for Cubans.
he fought for the autonomy and freedom of Cuban people. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Janiel says, yeah, he was a lawyer, so he was very educated. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Now, obviously, in the one minute, you don't have enough time to write all of this down. I'm just showing you this for learning, but I would write down intelligent lawyer, courageous revolutionary war. So my notes would be in the one minute, in fact, a lot simpler. They would just be these parts. Um, okay. So there would just be a couple of words like that. Okay, so the underlined words here, those would be the only words in my actual notes in the real IELTS exam. I'm just writing down more details so it makes sense to everybody who's watching. Is that clear? So does everybody follow me here? So I can't do exactly what you would do in the IELTS exam because then you would be like, huh, what is Adrian writing? Um, so I have to be a little bit more detailed, but of course in the one minute, you don't have enough time to write down full sentences for these parts, okay? So clearly here you would just write courage, Revolution, war, uh, educated lawyer, egocentric media, uh, fair autonomy, freedom. Okay. All right. Uh, another uh, courageous um, part here is uh, fought. Um, and many people know this, some people don't. Um, the U.S. tried to assassinate uh, Fidel Castro more than 100 times. Um, Fidel Castro had a very, very elite uh, personal uh, security detail, um, and uh, they were able to protect him amazingly well. But uh, the U.S. tried to basically, or U.S. leadership uh, throughout his uh, uh, political career, especially the early career, um, the U.S. tried to assassinate Fidel Castro more than 100 times. I think even more than 200 times. Okay. So uh, it would take a lot of courage to continue being the leader of a country when basically just about every other week uh, somebody is trying to kill you. Right. So, um, yeah. Okay. So we've got some good, good information there. And I think, you know, if you know about Fidel Castro and you were giving this uh, response to um, this cue card part two question in the aisles, you'd probably say that one of the reasons he's really memorable is because Fidel Castro is an example of how one man can change the fate of a small country in the face of extreme uh, adversity or extreme challenge, right? So... Um, Even as the underdog, okay? Does anybody know what that means, underdog? So this is why I would say he's a very memorable person and most people will never forget him because, of course, Cuba is a small island country just south of the United States. It's very, very close to the United States. Um, of course, one uh, word that would come into this response at some um point is he was the communist leader of Cuba. Okay. Does anybody know what uh, underdog means? So Kyber says, yes, I know it's when you are underneath um, the person who has a higher rank than you. Uh, not really, Kyber. That's not what it means. Yeah, there we go. Sam Memon, it sounds like you found the uh, dictionary definition. It's a competitor thought to have little chance of winning. Yeah. 
So the underdog is a competitor with little chance of winning. So when you have um, like a very, very uh, powerful team, like let's say we're talking about football and um, it's Brazil uh, versus um, a country that has very little chance of winning like Canada. Okay, So let's say it's uh, football, Brazil versus Canada for the World Cup. Uh, Canada would definitely be the underdog uh, in that matchup, okay? So Canada would have little chance of winning against the Brazilian team. So Canada would be the underdog, okay? So uh, Fidel Castro had a, was always the underdog because uh, Cuba was always in competition with uh, the U.S. And, of course, uh, nobody ever thought that Cuba would be able to maintain its uh, autonomy, so its individuality is being so close to the U.S. as a communist country, okay? All right. Okay, so now um, we want to get our first sentence ready, okay, uh, before your 60-second uh, prep time is up. And this is very, very, very important. All right. Uh, what often happens in part two cue card is the examiner says, OK, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. And then students do this. They go, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> um. OK, uh, well, uh, there are many, many famous people that I learned about in school. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about this today. The uh, famous person that I want to talk to you about today is Fidel Castro. Okay, there goes 30% of your speaking time, and all you have done is given me a name. That's bad. You're not going to get a band nine if you use 30% of your speaking time to introduce your topic. All right. Uh, the examiner will say, okay, didn't complete or didn't speak fluently or coherently enough, all right? Um, you can't do that. So you have to have your first sentence ready. So when the examiner says, okay, uh, your one-minute preparation time is up, please begin speaking, immediately you have your first sentence. So uh, a very memorable historical figure that I learned about in my grade 11 history class when we were studying uh, 20th century world history is Fidel Castro. Okay. So that would be your first sentence, okay? So as soon as the examiner says, okay, your one minute preparation time is up, please begin speaking. Yes, a very memorable historical figure that I learned about in my grade 11 history class when we were studying 20th century world history is Fidel Castro. Boom, you are on path to a band nine. Good fluency, okay? Kyber says, back five years ago when I was in my 11th grade at Jeddah School in Saudi Arabia, I learned about Fidel Castro. He was a well-built guy and had a big beard with a mustache and a pointed nose uh, with average height. Very good, Kyber. So that's another way to start. You're talking about describing him right away. And that's totally fine, okay? So that's good. It's a good start, all right? I would talk about the event first and then go into the details of the person, all right, um, but it's good. So let's build this up. Chabi says, I remember years ago in the fifth grade history school, um, how I was um, stunned to learn about the interesting uh, life and achievements of Fidel Castro. Chabi, watch your grammar. You've got some really random kind of uh, parts in there, okay? All right, Pachu says, a person whom I learned about in primary school is Fidel Castro. Now, try to be realistic, ladies and gents. So, Pachu, um, yes, you probably would not be learning about Fidel Castro in primary school. It would be at least middle school, but most likely high school, right? Primary school or your first six grades, you're probably not learning about the communist leader of Cuba 
in grade one, two, three, four, five. That would just be kind of weird. Um, so careful with that. So make sure that what you say is believable. Otherwise, the examiner might think that you don't actually know the meaning of primary school. Okay, so be really careful. All right. Okay, and then um, I keep going. So um, I distinctly remember that me and two of my uh, classmates um, did a 20-minute PowerPoint uh, presentation for our class about this famous uh, revolutionary leader of communist uh, Cuba. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Ahmed, our teacher, was so impressed by our presentation that we had uh, received a, a grade of 95%. Okay, so there we go. Um, here now, because I took some good notes, I had some good thinking, good planning in that one minute, it's really smooth and simple for me to just keep talking and introducing new information. All I'm doing here, students, all I'm doing is I'm taking my notes from here and I'm putting them together. So I've uh, talked about that. I've talked about that. I've talked about Mr. Ahmed. I've talked about my group members. Okay, I've talked about my group project, my PowerPoint presentation. I haven't talked about that, that, and that, and I'm not going to jump around. If I have time at the end, then I will maybe put in some more information. So when I attended the 52nd school in Jeddah five years ago, um, the 20 classmates were really impressed by this presentation as well. I'm sure many of them would still remember some information about Fidel Castro. So I can put that in at the end, okay, as I'm talking, all right? Esh Bahrati says, hello, Adrian. I had my IELTS recently. I got 7.5 because of you. Listening, 8.5. Reading, 8. Writing, 7. Speaking, 7. Thank you so much. Esh Bahrati, congratulations. I want to give you a double thumbs up, big thumbs up like that. Um, send me an email, Bahrati, to adrian at aehelp.com so I can have your testimonial. We love success stories like yours. That's fantastic. Good job. Okay. All right. So uh, to continue my speaking, now I'm just going to use more information about Mr. Castro, the leader of communist Cuba. And if anybody wants to read a great um, biography, by the way, read uh, the biography of Che Guevara, uh, who, uh, so Fidel Castro would not have been as successful as he was without Che Guevara, the doctor, who was also very intelligent and was basically like Castro's brother and friend. So check that out, okay? A brilliant person as well. Okay, um, so... Yeah, let's keep going. So mostly, Fidel Castro is depicted as a stern man of average height wearing a green military uniform with a big beard and mustache and a cigar, a Cuban cigar hanging from his mouth. Okay. Castro was the communist leader of Cuba for the second half of the 20th uh, century. 
he was an extremely brave individual as he led several military um, strikes in a revolution to gain control of Cuba and to protect a Cuban interest from U.S. pressure. In fact, he was so courageous that he did not run from his position even after more than 100 assassination attempts on his life. He was a very clever uh, person. He uh, was a lawyer and he was able to strategically use uh, Soviet interests to protect uh, Cuba from uh, U.S. control. Okay. All right. So I'm just going along here. You hear me kind of mumbling to myself, but all I'm really doing is thinking about my notes and then uh, putting it together. All right. And so now, if I don't know what to say at this point, I would probably look back at my questions, okay? So the IELTS examiner puts the part two cue card questions in front of you and keeps them there for the whole three minutes, so one minute preparation time, two minute speaking time, because the examiner um, wants you to use those questions when you need them, okay? So many students just read the question once, one time, they write down their notes, and then they completely forget about the questions and the notes as if they never existed. That's terrible. And then they get stuck for ideas, and they don't look at the questions. They don't look at the notes. It's like, ah! um, you have to use your notes. You have to use the questions to help you, okay? All right? Uh, so... Um, why this person is memorable from your studies, all right? There's a question that I haven't really answered yet, and so I'm going to answer that now. So, not only is Castro memorable from my uh, high school learning in the, see, notice how here I can put it in, 52nd uh, high school in Jeddah. <clears throat> uh, because of the, uh, of the group project. But also because he was the absolute underdog in the Cold War and through brilliant political tact, he was able to represent <clears throat> the interests and um, autonomy of the Cuban people. Okay, so there would be uh, the last parts of my notes that I'm putting together, okay? All right, um, so that's how you do it, okay? Now, Pachu, uh, you're doing a good job. He was a thin man of average height, had a big mustache. He had good skills to control military forces. He was a military strategist, uh, Pachu, okay? All right. Kartar. Um, yeah, Anurag, absolutely speaking uh, or reading novels will help you to improve your speaking skills. Yeah. 
Uh, strategically is the adjective form, potato of strategy. Okay, strategy. All right, so let's go back now to the original question. And then we'll look at the answer together. So again, speak and repeat. So practice your speaking here. Copy my intonation. Copy my pronunciation, my enunciation. Here we go. Uh, describe a person you learned about in school. You should say who the person is, what class you learned about this person, why this person is memorable from your studies. Your one minute preparation time begins now. And your one minute preparation time is up. You've taken all of these notes. You have your first sentence ready. Um, here we go. A very memorable historical figure that I learned about in my grade 11 history class when we were studying 20th century world history. This is Fidel Castro. I distinctly remember that me and two of my classmates did a 20 minute PowerPoint presentation for our class about this famous revolutionary communist leader of Cuba. Mr. Ahmed, our teacher, was so impressed by our presentation that we had received a grade of 95%. Mostly, uh, Fidel Castro is depicted as a stern man of average height wearing a green military uniform with a big beard and mustache and a Cuban cigar hanging from his mouth. Castro was the communist leader of Cuba for the second half of uh, the 20th century. He was an extremely brave individual as he led several military strikes in a revolution to gain control of Cuba and to protect Cuban interests from U.S. pressure. In fact, he was so courageous that he did not run from his position even after more than 100 assassination attempts on his life. He was a very clever person. He was a lawyer and he was able to strategically use Soviet interests to protect Cuba from U.S. control. Not only is Castro memorable uh, from my high school learning in the 52nd school in Jeddah because of the group project, but also because he was the absolute underdog in the Cold War and through brilliant political tact, he was able to represent the interests and autonomy of the Cuban people. Okay, so I have some writing mistakes here, um, like this should be capitalized, it's the name of the war, but that's not important. What's more important here is the flow and response, okay? So that would get you a band nine, everyone. That's how you put it together. Again, in order to do this, I need to, first of all, make sure that I clearly understand the question that's being asked. Secondly, I have to identify that here I'm talking about a person and an event. I have to know that talking about a person requires some points about their appearance um, and also their personality backed by action. I have to understand that events require time, location, attendees, activities, okay? And then I need to put my first sentence in play before my one minute preparation time is up and put together all of the information from my notes. If I get stuck during the two minutes, I look at the questions, I look at my notes to make sure that I can uh, create fluent information without repeating myself, okay? All right, um, that's how you do it. Uh, Zalak, if you use natural fillers like ums and ahs, it's totally fine as long as you're being fluent. There's no problem with that. You won't lose marks. I do it. I'm sure many of you realized Adrian says um and ah. Uh. I do it while I'm speaking. It's still a band nine. When I did my official IELTS exam, I used ums and ahs, and I did pretty well, as you'll see from my scores uh, tomorrow morning. Okay, uh, that's it for today's class, everyone. Uh, tomorrow, I will have uh, premiered the uh, fourth episode of my Band 9 IELTS journey where uh, I reveal my results finally. Um, so make sure to join me for that. That's tomorrow at this exact same time. And for everybody watching, spend a couple dollars, support us, support our awesome employees. It's not just me. We have a, a small team of individuals creating products and apps and so on and so forth. Um, purchase our premium package 
at aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gltshelp.com for general IELTS. Um, and we will continue to work hard to make sure that you get those high, high uh, band scores. Have a lovely rest of your weekend, everybody. Remember that you're all smart, beautiful people. Much love to all of you, wherever you are in this great, wonderful world. Bye for now. I'm Adrian, signing out from Victoria, Canada.